So this video is going to elaborate a little bit more on some of the cliff riding we were doing that morning before we were essentially stranded by the mudslides and then evacuated by helicopter. Now this is well past Bush Arm on Kinbasket Lake and I was really happy to have the opportunity to be out there with some other riders rather than doing this solo. And so this is just a bit of a view, but here I am taking off um, up this route. Joe had been doing a lot of uh, adventure discovery riding back in this area and came across this and shared it with us. Now the first bit I'm showing is just demonstrating that there's quite a few switchbacks and the sharp corners with the climbs to get you up into the area. I'm driving my Honda CB500X, bike weighs about 440 pounds, and I've probably got about 30 pounds of gear. So just uh, winding the way up here, and it's just a gorgeous morning. Now it had rained all, all night, and that's why it's still a little bit misty, you'll see. But this road has really absorbed the moisture well. So it wasn't necessarily slippery, at least not here. And now we're getting up more to where the, the cliffs are and where the burn area was. And of course, with the burn area and the, uh, the trees no longer absorbing much water and a lot of the vegetation gone, it changes the stability of the slopes. And up ahead, you'll start to see um, some of the rocks that were accumulated on the trail, probably since the fire. Again, pointed out that uh, one waterfall, but there are lots of waterfalls all throughout this entire area. camera's on my left mirror, so it is over by my left shoulder. So it does make it appear that I'm a little bit closer than where my wheel is actually traveling. So it's on my left. And these are the rocks that I'm uh, talking about and just picking my way through here. And it's again one of these places that's quite difficult because it is so scenic everything is grabbing your attention. You've got to be careful where you've got your wheel going, but you don't want to miss any of the stunning views. It was just absolutely fantastic getting back up in here. And of course, you know, some of these rocks are bigger than others and you know that they came up from above you on the right, but I can tell you I'm not looking to the right nearly as much as I tend to be looking over and paying attention to that left side. And the other thing about this route is Adventure Joe had told me there's one difficult section, it's short, and this is it coming up here. He described it perfectly as being short and rocky just about 10 meters um, and so it, it was it was not too bad and then I got up to about here and um, thought you know what I might do a little bit here to get through this stuff and then when you're thinking about things you've got to be very careful where you put the emphasis on words is this a slow worker ahead? Is this a worker working slowly? But it's more like a slow worker. Yeah, so that looks good enough. Should be able to get through there. 
And now here's uh, Joe coming up through that section. And as you can see, this the, the view is just continues to be spectacular. And then I'm falling a little bit behind Joe. He's uh, got some good speed, but then I notice here in this track, I can see where his route went. So I decided to go uh, left. But um, when we come up by here, you'll be able to see how much that trail just kind of hooked off at the end. And uh, I'm sure he's pretty glad to keep her, keep her straight. He certainly wouldn't want to have been hooking to the left through that area. And then we're continue to climb up this road. Um, it does continue straight, but the road's been decommissioned, and you'll see where we parked the bikes. Another example of a big rock that must have come down from somewhere. And we're starting to get, you know, fairly close to Alberta in here. And straight ahead you can see where the road's been decommissioned. It does uh, swoop around to the right a little bit and go up to another logging area patch but uh, this is essentially the end of what's right by the river. So a quick little peek here. And then we'll, um, we'll head down, just because now heading down, it's got a different view and it opens up quite a bit. And it's, it's just beautiful with that river running in beside you. You know, first thing in the morning is probably 8 o'clock or something. Um, this actually shows that it is fairly steep through here, which you don't often get with a camera. And uh, I'll speed this up here a little bit. Uh, just here so you get a picture of what it looks like without spending too much time you know maybe this is the speed I should be driving at at all times but it's just gorgeous riding in through here it was a fantastic ride and picking your way through This was the area I cleaned a few of the rocks out of the way. And now we're coming up to that uh, one little rocky section. I'd scoped it out pretty well on the way up, thinking when I come down, I'm going left, I'm going left. And then that worked out pretty well. Okay, time to get at her and continue part way down. And it's starting to be a nicer day. Some of the fog is starting to burn off a little bit. You can see the road up ahead in the distance.
And of course your eyes are being drawn over to that edge and it feels like you're being pulled over to that edge the entire time. I was just I was just tickled to be riding on this especially to have two other riders with me let's have a little bit of a look at the view here just terrific and working our way down just a little bit more again some of the burn area here as it opens up into the valley. And then Kinbasket Lake would be way off in the distance, some 35 kilometers or so. And then this is Joe just pulling up to where our campsite was. Hammer on the rear brake and spin into position. That was a look at the uh, campsite. And then we ventured up another road to find that it was completely blocked at this time by some trees. But will I go back there? Who knows? Thanks for watching.